Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Bottom, or sorry, top right hand corner. We got Nyokin starting as the red Terran bottom left hand corner. We have Neon Stored starting as the blue Terran. This is, I think, on Eclipse. I should have checked the map before diving into this. Yeah, going to be on Eclipse. Round one of the New York City StarCon 2023, covering all the games that did not make it to the mainstream. In case you're wondering where the mainstream games were, and the mainstream, I mean the ones that got casted the day of the tournament, go to uh, Artosis Casts, I believe. Should be in the description. It's weird because it's like at Artosis Casts, but also when you do that, it like converts it into some weird gobbledygook that then goes to his YouTube channel as well. Dion Sword, I got to hang out with him at the Airbnb. He also, afterwards, uh, we had dinner. I didn't get to chat with him as much as I wanted to, but fun guy. Ended up, uh, I think, running out and partying with Urban, which was a, a blast. Solid guy, I think I have seen him once or twice in BSL. We have him going up against Nyokin, and unfortunately this is a tough opponent to start up against. Neon Sword is not too shabby. I think he is around the 1800 range, somewhere around there, 1700, 1800. Possibly 1900, I'm not sure, but Nyokin is not only old school, he is very intelligent and formidable, and I would actually say that TVT is one of his marquee matchups. I actually feel like he's rather clever across the board. Nyokin, when he is able... I feel like when Nyokin goes in with a game plan, he ends up winning 9 times out of 10. And when he just kind of goes in trying to wing it, more often than not, he ends up in kind of more defensive uh, position and has less success in those matches. That's just my feeling. But his game plans are just sharp. He's extremely intelligent. One of my favorite people, if not my favorite person to cast with, um, out there. He unfortunately couldn't cast a lot of the games the day of because he had he was uh, actually masked up because he was recovering from, uh, I believe, some sort of cold or something. Enjoyed the courtesy of the mask. It was funny, I actually brought co some cough drops as well. Looks like we're seeing gas op uh, mirrored openers thus far with a gas opener. Um, there's an old caster trick I learned because there was one time I had kind of a sniffly... I had allergies at an old casting thing and my voice was giving out and I actually realized it, you know you get the scratchy throat when you've been talking uh, too much but I found out actually that cough drops cure both problems where I was like oh my throat doesn't feel so bad anymore so if you guys ever need to talk down the line where it's like oh man I really do need to keep my voice up and be able to say things cough drops I like the Ricola lemon ones in particular anyway we do have a marine trying to blockade the ramp on one side it looks like Neon Sword was able to slip in on the opposite side, Marine doing some damage. The SCV able to see the number of SCV on gas, which should be an indicator that this is going to be a faster command center build rather than a faster factory style. Same thing was confirmed opposite end, although Nyokin a little bit more defensive. Or he's, he's kind of hidden this factory, this back corner, and staggered out these supply depots a little bit. And I'm wondering if this was to just throw Neon Sword off his game or enforce kind of a wider scout and hide a little bit more of information as far as what he was up to. Command Center has been lifted off on both ends. As far as timing wise, we'll see if they cross that middle line, which would be an indicator that they lifted they lifted off and crossed paths at the exact same moment. Vulture first build on one end. Vulture first build on the opposite end. A Marine just checking that there was nothing proxy to the north. And already we got a starport follow up from Nyokin. And we'll see kind of the clever unsuspecting build. He actually talked about how much he loved doing this, just because it ends up being, uh, you can do a lot of things. You can go drop ship first, you can go wraith into drop, which is I think his particular favorite, because when you go wraith and then into drop, very rarely they'll, very rarely will players expect wraith into drop ship as a follow-up. They'll kind of expect more continuation of wraith uh, to have kind of that map control in view of uh, siege tanks and whatever not, and when you're setting up the, the established lines. However, that does end up that does end up cutting into siege tank count. That does end up delaying some other bits of tech. But if you can get some economic damage done, it's uh, can do a lot for you. Let's see if Neon Sword's able to actually scooch all the way in to see this. Right now, he has very little anti air. It looks like he's got a machine shop. I take it back. He's got that armory constructing. So he is potentially anticipating this machine shop dropping on this side. He's going up to a second factory, already whirling up vulture speed. Barracks is going to be able to float over the natural expansion. 
see what sort of targets there are. Marines doing some damage right there. The Vulture's moving up, and it's going to be three on two, actually. Spot so Nyokin spotting that there was one less Vulture there, and now going to get some free kills already. And actually ending up with a better engagement fight. Nice micro back there as well. So because the Vulture's coming in piecemeal one at a time and not in a gathering, Nyokin just able to out-micro right there, and now Trouble Town. So the Wraith, instead of going to the natural expansion, going to start working on that. Vulture's trying to press up into the front. Nice save here by Neon Sword, repairing the Vulture at the ramp. However, his natural expansion has already taken considerable damage, and he is starting off this series in a rough position. Nyokin already has double the workers, and Neon Sword needs to... The response has to be some sort of all-in play, honestly. Because otherwise, he'll be in an irrecoverable position. Now you can drop in that control tower, sticking with the game plan, getting siege tech and engineering bay as well. So he's got the two wraith. That's kind of an interesting pin position as well. He's done so much damage. Neon Sword really needs to do something clever to follow this up, but he's also going to have to continue, uh, continually build goliaths to help deal against the wraith. Because one problem with wraith is they are very mobile. They're flying units, so they can be absolutely everywhere. So if Neon Sword actually emptied his natural expansion and was going for additional damage, somewhere out in the field, it would be problematic because he needs to keep some troops here at home base to defend against this threat. Some additional disruption. It looks like two vultures starting to migrate their way out. Might be a big play here because there's only a marine and a siege tank. Looks like they're going to check the third just to see if Nyokin opt for it. And it looks like we are going to see that dropship follow up with two additional factories plop down here as well. The barracks floating back over that natural expansion to see what sort of opportunities are here. Second gas being grabbed as well as a missile turret defensively being placed the natural expansion. But I do want to point out we've got two siege tanks versus two siege tanks because of all of that economic damage that's happened already. <clears throat> and Neon Sword hasn't increased that factory count. It looks like he wants to try to play this out macro style. Just continue to build those SCVs, hold tight, and hope for the best, I suppose. We've got the dropship out. Second machine shop dropping. Additional fa So we're going up to four factories here for Nyokin. See, tanks, one going to siege on the high ground, but a little bit of damage done in the natural. The vultures cleaned up pretty rapidly, however. And right now, Neon Sword very much in the dark. I don't think he spotted that dropship. We got a handful of vultures being constructed, and that will be... Is it going to be siege tanks? It's actually going to be siege tanks now that are moving up. Neon Sword starting to move out. Is going to be able to take that barracks down. And I think Nyokin might have spotted that army making its way across. Unfortunately, well, this might turn into a Neon Sword victory, depending. Because all of... So we got a bunch of siege tanks moving out. Nyokin lifted up the two siege tanks he's got. He's got the high ground advantage and some vultures out on the front. But if Neon Sword just moves immediately, this will be three versus two and maybe some damage at the natural expansion. Nyokin's got some mines, however, in the way. So the siege tanks are going to have to make their way across. And there's a lot of damage territory to get through. Unfortunately, Neon Sword not pressing all the way in. He's holding short with these siege tanks looking to siege on that edge. And while they're siege short, that's going to allow Nyokin's factories to kick in, get some more siege tanks on the field, and open up the drop opportunity. It looks like the dropships making sure there is siegeable territory over that edge and continuing to press in. The Vulture's peeking in, getting some damage right there. And so additional... Yeah, additional troops. So all of the defensive troops now for Neon Sword, it's the flip situation where all the defensive troops were out of position and now you have a tank grouping up and sieging inside neon swords base siege tanks getting wiped out and ne nyokin just going to bunny hop his way forward counter strike style he could also draw that dropship all the way back to the main and potentially just siege drop on top of this comps heading forward getting a, a few hits on the low ground group prepare on that siege tank to make sure that it's Victory of a victory. It looks like some of them getting wiped out, however. Wraith also didn't participate in that fight, which surprises me a little bit. But Nyokin, in the meantime, with that siege tank over that forward line, denying a lot of territory here to the north. Neon Sword gonna move that barracks up to try to get some vision on that territory, trying to peek forward. But again, because of the time delay, he's ending up behind in the numbers advantage. 
and Ioken is able to defend, wipe everything out. He still maintains the worker lead. He has an option to go ahead and grab an additional base, which he's already pre-constructed and going to land. This is what I'm telling you, man. Ioken's on top of it, although he's floating it a ways out. Is he going to go for the 11 o'clock instead of maybe floating it a little bit too far forward? It looks like he's just going to transport some SCVs forward, which also kind of cloaks the, the play here from Neon Sword. Wraith continually constructing Neon Sword, trying to sneak a base bottom right to get back into this. Trying to evict that siege tank from the north. Unfortunately, not going to have success, and it looks like he's going to end up losing another barracks. And Ioka now pressing forward, double the supply at the 10 minute mark. A couple Wraith getting picked off, but this is just too many. Like, these siege tanks don't even need to siege, but it looks like they're going to anyway. And now, Neon Sword very much pinned in. Gonna GG right there. Oof. Myokin playing that fantastically. And that just, it kind of demonstrates how sharp he is in this matchup. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.